Hello, my fellow HBICs. How are you doing today? This morning, this evening, this afternoon, whatever. Whew. As you can see by the title, this video is for people who are just discovering the law of assumption. So this video might not be for every single one of you. And I get that, but this was a requested video. And I know that when I first started, this was something I was looking for. So that's what it's here for today. Um, if you're new, this is, or if this is the first video you've ever seen of mine, let me warn you now, I do not talk professional. I talk laid back as fuck because I'm laid back, kind of. Uh, I talk to you just like I would talk to you if we met in person. I don't put on um, the coaching or teacher hat when I make videos, okay? Because I don't like when people do that to me, so I'm not going to do it to you, okay? We're all equals, okay? So, yeah, don't expect you're going to get any some scientific fucking list from me, okay? This is just going to be uh, the basics, and it's going to be in real people talk, okay? So, the law of assumption. The law of assumption is somewhat similar. I call them sisters uh, to the law of attraction. So, if you've already experienced the law of attraction, uh, you know, people who follow the law of attraction believe that your thoughts create, blah, blah, blah. But they tend to add on a lot of more fucking rules. And right? we don't need those extra rules because the law of assumption is kind of just by its own self. And it's saying your thoughts create. You're the God of your reality. You decide what happens in your reality. So everyone here on this earth has their own reality and they are in charge of it, including yourself. We are all individuals, okay? Each one of us can be, do, and have whatever the fuck we want in our reality, okay? So what does that mean for you? That means that if you're trying to manifest a specific SP, we'll just, call, we'll just say like Jason Momoa. We'll use a celebrity one. If you're trying to manifest Jason Momoa and the girl next door is trying to manifest him too, Technically, both of you can manifest him and both happily have him because we're all, we're in our own realities, right? Jason Momoa is in her reality too, okay? We're all in each other's reality. I know that's kind of a kooky thought. It's hard to, hard to swallow that at first, but it's the truth. I, I don't want to say like we are carbon copies in each other's realities. I believe we're one entity, but... We are multidimensional. We, we, it just is, to be honest, none of us know the 100% explanation of what it is, but this is what I have the most evidence of. Okay. Um, so there's nothing off limits to you. If you are currently not in, um, you know, the big financial status, you don't got a lot of money and you want it, you may have it. You have to affirm for it. And you'll hear those words, affirm, your assumptions, thrown, a lot of, thrown around a lot. When you are told to affirm, it means you are coming up with a phrase, an affirmation, to manifest what you want. Because your thoughts create. And whatever you dominantly think about, that is what continuously manifests in your reality. You literally control the world around you. You do. If you are brand new to the law of assumption, which I'm sure you are if you're reading, uh, watching a beginner's video, go ahead and test it. Or you may have already experienced some things that you just don't have the answer for. And I'll give you one because this is what I experienced when I was in my teenage years. Um, actually, I'd say that I started noticing about the age of 12. But I would think of a song that I hadn't heard of in, it could be a year, months, whatever. And if it didn't happen the day, the next day, that song would show up playing somewhere randomly, out of nowhere. And even back then as a child, I, I knew that that was something. I didn't know what, I didn't think I was, you know, creating the world around me. I just knew that that was, that was something like, well, there was a connection there. I just didn't know what it was. So, have you ever just thought about someone that you haven't talked to in a long time and then all of a sudden out of the blue they text, call, or you see them somewhere? That's the law of assumption. Those are little blips for you. How about when you're you're thinking about a specific vehicle, a, a specific make and model of a vehicle, and the next thing you pass on the road is that 
make and model vehicle. All those little things are called synchronicities, okay? And basically, you've created them. They were a manifestation of your thought. You had no resistance to that thought. See what I mean? What is resistance? Resistance is certain things that you have a hard time manifesting or take you longer than normal things to manifest. And that's just because you have a thought that we need to get rid of. So a lot of people come to the Law of Assumption videos to manifest money, specific persons. If you don't know what a specific person is or an SP, as it sometimes referred to, it means a love interest or it can mean just a friend. But usually people are seeking out how to maybe get someone back that they were in a relationship with before or blah, blah, blah. Uh, you can do that. You can manifest a specific person. You can manifest literally anything you can think of. It can You can manifest. What you desire desires you. When you are thinking... I just dropped everything. <laughs> Anyways, back to your affirmations. So, because your dominant thoughts create, we say affirmations as often as possible so that they become your dominant thought so that they can create in your reality. And most often we use the examples of the specific person, which is someone you're trying to manifest maybe love or friendship with. If you have had a past history with that person, and let's just say they cheated on you and you're trying to manifest that relationship back, we need you to not be thinking about how they cheated on you and we need you to start thinking about how you guys are back in a loving, happy relationship. So that is what you are going to affirm every single time you think of that person. And if you want to kick it up a notch, meaning speed it up, how quick that person comes back to you in the way you want them, you affirm constantly. You affirm every free moment you have. And affirming, you can say in your head, you can say out loud. And some of us, like myself, we like to write them down as well. I do say you never have to write anything down to manifest it. It's just, it's just another way of A, getting that affirmation to sink in your brain because you have to think about what you're writing, A. And B, it can also help you Bring your be yourself back down to a calm state if you're having anxiety over, over anything. It just gets your mind focused on your affirmation, right? That's another word that gets thrown around here all the time is what you focus on, blah, blah, blah. What you focus on manifests. Well, that's true. So if you're someone who consistently focuses on negative things, those are the things you're going to manifest. So if you're trying to manifest more money in your life, and that's why you're on here searching for videos... Um, and you've been broke most of your life, so you think that money is hard to come by, we got to get rid of that thought because that's been your dominant thought, that money is hard to get. Money is hard to come by. I'm never going to have enough money. I never, ever have enough money, right? We need to change that. And you got to start affirming how money comes to you quickly and easily. You make a certain dollar amount every single day. You have more than enough money to pay your bills and to buy whatever you want. If you want to save, you can do whatever you want because you have constant money flowing to you. And in the beginning, when you're trying to manifest any subject, right? When you start saying your affirmations, a lot of you are not going to believe them. They're going to sound like a bunch of fucking poppycock to you. And guess what? That's okay. Just keep affirming. You don't have to believe what you're saying. You just got to do it. Okay? Now, one thing I always put out there is affirmations should sound like your normal talking self. So just because I say my SP is head over heels in love with me, he always he's always loyal and faithful to me, and that, that does not resonate to you, then reword it so that it does. Okay, maybe you want to say your SP uh, is obsessed with you. I also like that one as well. Some people are afraid of that word obsessed because obsessed means something negative, whatever. Let's not even get over there. Say your affirmations, word them in a way that is comfortable to your normal speaking. That's, that's all I mean. So we know our thoughts create. We know that we say affirmations to get them to become our dominant thought. So next thing we need to worry about is our mental diet. What is a mental diet? A mental diet is kind of just like a food diet. When you're trying to lose weight, you're watching what you're eating. You can, unless you manifest weight loss. 
and you can do that as well because I have, I'm still manifesting, but I've lost 70 or 75 pounds. 70 or 75 pounds. I haven't weighed myself in a while. Uh, anyway, doesn't matter. You can manifest anything, okay? So the mental diet. What that means is we need to get rid of negative thoughts. So if you're trying to manifest weight loss, you cannot walk into a mirror every day and tell yourself how fat and ugly you look. That's not gonna work. So if we want whatever your idea of what beautiful is, right? Tell yourself you're damn well beautiful. And every time a negative thought comes up about your appearance, your weight, your whatnot, you say the opposite. You tell yourself, Eden, I've had to fight with myself and say, no, no, I am losing weight constantly. I now weigh this much or less. I always say 175 pounds or less. I am beautiful. Everyone thinks I'm beautiful. Everyone finds me attractive. Everyone finds me sexy. You just say things like that. You beat down that negative thought. You've been broke your whole life. You're trying to manifest money. You constantly get the thoughts of, I don't have enough money for that. I don't have, I can't do that. I, 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 I'm looking at my checking account. I got a nervous stomach feeling. I don't have enough money. No, stop looking at the 3D, okay? And what, there's you go, here's another thing. Looking at the 3D, which, which means your current right now, what's going on around you is your 3D right now, right? We don't look at that for evidence that shit's working. We don't. We let the 3D go. We block it out as best as possible. I know you can't block it out really because you got you still got to live in it. But what I'm saying is, is we got to stop negatively reacting to the 3D, okay? What we're doing is taking over our thoughts so that they we have control of what we manifest and things will start popping up. You don't have to search them out and look for them because 90% of the time you're going to be disappointed by doing that. That's why I say stop looking at the 3D. Don't react to the 3D. When I say don't react at the 3D, it means that you're manifesting that your SP contacts you constantly. You two are still technically broke up and uh, he or she hasn't contacted you in a damn year. You're over here affirming that they do. And then you're going to go be checking their, your phone and seeing that they ain't texted you. And you're going to get all upset and cry and go on this spiral of emotions. No, we don't have time for that anymore. And don't worry, just because you have one or two emotional reactions, it's not gonna ruin your manifestation. You just gotta pick your ass back up, right? Dust yourself off and start again. Dust yourself, right? You can just sit up and start again, start again. I love that song. Um, Yeah, you just pick your fucking self up again and you get back on the wagon and get back to affirming. That's all it means, okay? We don't have time to be upset about what's not happening in the, in the moment because in the moment is the manifestation of your previous thoughts. It was the thoughts you had yesterday, the month before, the year before, whatever, it's rolling out. You might also notice that when you start staying on your affirmations, you'll hear me always say, get on your affirmations. It means you need to affirm as much as possible. The more you want something, the more you should affirm for it. If you want it super bad, you should be affirming for it constantly. Every time you have a free moment by your damn self, be affirming in your head, out loud, on paper, whatever, okay? So, one thing I want to tell you about is don't be surprised if what you're trying to manifest is a, a certain subject that you feel really strongly about. And usually in my experience and what I've seen out there, it's t it tends to be when you're trying to manifest love, your specific person, blah, 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 or um, money. Those are the two or um, a big change in health. Those three are so, so, so. I don't want to put a limiting belief on you, but if you have strong feelings attached to those three subjects, don't be surprised if when you start affirming for the thing you're trying to manifest, like shit hits the fan all of a sudden. All of a sudden, like, what, what the hell? I, I've been affirming this, this, and this, and all this terrible shit's happening. Don't panic and don't stop affirming. That's just the purge. What's the purge? The purge is something where all that negative shit that you used to think about that subject starts manifesting, right? Because your thoughts create. We got to clean the brain out. Your brain does not have the capacity to be hanging on to negative shit while you're trying to put positive shit in it. It's got to clean the house, man. We got to clean it out. It's like cleaning out the when you got the drain clogged with a bunch of hair, right? We got to get that out. And that's what that is. It's just purging out the bullshit as we fill that brain space back up, the subconscious back up 
with all the good positive shit. So don't panic. The dumbest thing you can do is to give up and stop affirming. No matter what the subject, no matter what's happening in your 3D, I will actually say, don't be a dummy. Stay on your affirmations, even if you've got to affirm through tears. If you're having an emotional breakdown because of how you're reacting to a situation, affirm through those damn tears. I'm telling you, stick to it. Because no matter what you're seeing in your reality right now as we speak, you have zero clue on what's going on in the background. Because the law of assumption is always at work. It is always working. And you don't know how many puzzle pieces, how many people, whatever, has to be moved around to bring you what you want. If you're trying to manifest an SP and they're currently with a third party and we need to get rid of that third party and it doesn't look like that bitch is going anywhere, you don't know what's going on in the background. Things could be rolling out right then and there and you just aren't aware of it. That's why you don't give up. You keep affirming. Okay, so basically that's kind of it. And I'm hoping I answered everything. The law of assumption is simply your thoughts create. Everything you think about or focus on and let become your dominant thought manifests. Now, the reason why we have to make some things your dominant thought is specifically if it's something that you have been thinking negative opposing thoughts to. The reason why I'm, I'm making that specific to you is because, well, then how come, Kim, you said that uh, you think of a song and it, and it shows up so fast? You know, that's not my dominant thought. I just thought about the song. That's because you have no resistance. You have no blockage. You have nothing. I hate that word blockage. You will learn that if you continue watching my channel. You have nothing opposing that song showing up, right? It's mainly the subjects that you have any previous history, story, bad feelings, or a set mindset to. Those subject areas... We need to pressurize the brain with the new happy thoughts. We have to. We're clearing out the gunk. So that's why there might be a time delay of how fast these things manifest out. But they will come. They will come. So, <clears throat> yeah, that's why some things you can manifest like that. And that's because you had no damn resistance to it. You had no negative thought about it. There was nothing to, to clean up. It could just fly through. Okay? So your affirmations are nothing more than phrases that are saying you have what you want. One important thing I almost forgot. When you word your affirmations, word them as if you already have what you want. And that is also sometimes called living in the end. Living in the end means like it sounds. It means you're already in the standpoint of having it. So if it means you're, you want a thousand dollars a day, say your affirmations as if you already are receiving a thousand dollars a day, right? Just keep going. And one thing I like to point out is sometimes in the beginning, some half-assed shit shows up. So maybe you're only, you're, man, you're affirming for $1,000 a day, but fucking 500 is what's showing up. We No, you're not done affirming then, right? You're not done affirming because you didn't get your full manifestation. So we don't stop. We continue. Just wanted to put that up there. So, because we don't take fucking breadcrumbs. We, we get what we want. The law of assumption always provides what we desire, what our dominant thoughts are. So we don't take breadcrumbs. We get what we want. Okay. At least that's what we do on, on this channel. Okay. So, all right. <clears throat> so you're on your affirmations, the phrases, you say them as often as possible. I get asked all the time, how many times a day, how many times a day should I be saying my affirmations? Every time the thought of that desire pops up in your head, start affirming. Every time a negative opposing thought. Why do I say negative and opposing? Because not every thought feels bad, like negative. They don't always feel negative. So I call it opposing, okay? Negative slash opposing thoughts. Every time one of them pop up, you start affirming. The more you affirm, okay? I'm not going to tell you a, a number. Yeah, 10 times a day should be enough. I'm never going to give you a number. It all depends on you. But... The more you affirm, the faster it comes. Okay? The more you affirm. Don't worry about being perfect. You don't have to be perfect. You just got to take control of your dominant thoughts. 
Now I'm trying to think, is there anything else we need to know about? Keeping the clean mental diet, which is we fight off those negative opposing thoughts with your affirmations. You don't allow them to spiral you out. And what I mean by that is, if you are thinking about something and it's causing you to have an emotion, then you have thought that thought too damn long, okay? Your emotions are like the temperature gauge on what's going on in the brain. So if you're in tears and if you've got that yucky butterfly, depressive, nervous, anxiety type feeling, or you're just angry, then you've been hanging on to a shitty thought that you're not supposed to be thinking anyway, and you should be fighting it off. So start affirming. That's all that means. There are no limits. There is nothing. There are no scenarios that can stop you from getting what you want. Nothing. If you're trying okay, to manifest $1,000 a day and you don't even have a fucking job, doesn't matter. As kooky as it sounds, it doesn't matter. There are no circumstances that matter. We control everything. If you're trying to manifest an SP that lives in friggin' Antarctica and you're over here in New York State with me, it doesn't matter. The circumstances don't matter. You can be, do, and have whatever you want. I'm not spewing shit. It's the truth. The minute you begin taking control of your thoughts, taking control and thinking and focusing on the things that you truly want, the faster they're going to start manifesting in your reality. It's the truth. When you hear the phrase, you're the God of your reality, that is because, listen, I won't debate you on what is out there, how we were made, what... I believe personally that there is an ultimate entity who created everything, who gave us the power to be the God of our reality. That's within us. That's my thought, okay? That's how I feel, but it doesn't mean I'm right. But there has to be some explanation of how this started, right? My feeling is there is an ultimate being somewhere. That person or that being gave us the power to create into our realities and that we, our souls, whatever you want to refer to yourself as energy, made the conscious decision to come here to experience everything. That's why we were given emotions, by the way. Okay. So we can experience, have the human emotions, but it's also the, for me, the moment you're aware that you actually create your reality is when you finally are given the ultimate gift. So now you can experience truly everything you want. Don't let life determine your happiness. You determine your happiness. You decide what you're going to experience. Don't, don't go back to sleep. Because that's what I think of people who, who have nothing to do with the law of assumption. Don't believe it. Just don't even know about it. Any of that. They're asleep. And they're letting life happen to them. No, we create our own lives. Once you start practicing the law of assumption, you will see constant confirmation that you created everything around you. It is just going to change you big time. It's You're living your best life for real, as corny as that saying is. You're the God of your reality. You are. No one else can create in your reality, just you. You control everything and there's nothing off limits to you. Now, I hope I gave a, I know this, I'm judging at this, this ain't no damn short video, but I hope this was a decent starting out video for those of you who are brand new to the Law of Assumption. If there's anything I did not answer or you have further questions, please leave them in the comments. I do my best to always answer my comments when I upload a video I, at some point at that day, come back to the video and answer comments. If I'm not doing it right as it's up, right as it's, uh, I can't talk today because I've been talking too much. This is like my fifth video. Ugh. I come back and answer comments. It's all going to die. Okay. So if you have a question that I didn't answer, someone else will in our little fellowship of HBICs will come and answer that question. And yes, if you're new here, we are the fellowship of HBICs. And if you don't know what an HBIC is, it's a head bitch in charge we are the head bitches in charge or the head boys the head boss some men don't want to be called bitches i get that so whatever we're the head bosses in charge we are what rules our reality we create it so let's start creating everything you've ever wanted because you can have it 
on my channel, my videos, if you continue to watch my channel, I usually only discuss things I've experienced or have a roundabout experience with. And if you're someone trying to manifest money, I have done it. And I had quite a shitty money mindset. I've done it. You can do it. If you only knew how negative I was prior to the law of assumption. And if I can change my mindset and bring about my desires, you can too. You can too. There is nothing off limits to you. I will stop talking because this is going to be like a 20 fucking minute video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you subscribe and come back and join my fellowship. And if you do, I'll see you in a day or two. Love you all.